blood. Blood everywhere. It's spread on the walls. People have started writing words in it, but it's a script I can't identify. I'm alone now on the comms deck. Pearson was the last one with me, but I had to stab him in the throat to stop him. Stop him. I can't remember what I had to stop him doing, but he's dead now. I can hear people out there. Some of them are still walking around. Some of them are barely breathing. I have to find them. I have to silence them. Elite Dangerous is a passionate subject, and as such, I understand some people's trepidation to speculate on anything that may have a connection to a larger sequence of events. If you are offended by the discussion of Greek myths, speculation, Fargoids, Sirens, Thetis, Northerners, Permit Locks, possible hidden meanings, or Tinfoil, please look away now. I am not the fountain of knowledge on Elite. And although I have an interest in the subject, I do not claim to have the definitive knowledge of this game. I try my best to formulate all my content as accurate as possible. However, there may be traces of nuts, fish, tinfoil, and or bones. You have been warned. The Sirens of the Deepest Void. One would think it's a reference to Greek mythology. They may be right. Siren, a device that makes a loud prolonged signal or warning sound. In Greek mythology, the Sirens were what became known as mermaids, who would lure hapless sailors to wreck on the rocks of Calypso. Taking the literal meaning of the word and trying to find a connection to events of Elite Dangerous, there are substantial links. One of the early laws of this game for me was the events of the Fargoid probes and sensors. When pilots found the spectrographic signal in the audio of these devices, it instantly had me hooked. Many a spur night would go by where I would seek the eventual outcome to these signals. Never before have I encountered a game that has something like this within it. Totally original and very British. In the days of Mephusely, there were large groups of long-haired males in bands hiding signals within music they would make. Names like Neil and Bob, clad in patchouli oil, surfing the cosmos via waves of 15-minute Rick Waitman solos, with themes of Michael Moorcock and Silas Eidman. Although not a time I have personally lived through, I'd imagine a great time indeed. What further sirens have we encountered that are not connected with the Fargoid events directly? Out there, on the cusp of inhabited space, there exists an ancient human vessel labelled Fetis. Although in the history of mankind, ships like this would wander the cosmos looking for a new home. Some would reach their destination with ships arriving at Tau Ceti and other early human colonies, but some would drift through what is now known as the core systems in various ways of failure. One of these ships, named the Fetis, counted something on a nearby planet that when witnessed, changed them forever. The Thetis is located around the moon of Nefertem 6a, otherwise an unremarkable system. Via anomalous signal data, the location of this generation ship was uncovered. When arriving at this point, you will notice the immense scale of these types of vessels. Completely self-contained cities wrapped up in several hundred thousand tons of steel. Upon scan of the Thetis, you will be greeted by various logs from the people who lived on the ship as follows. Still all quiet out here in the black. Just had our very first ninth gen child born on ship. That takes the current population to 17,401. Other than that, nothing out of the ordinary. Apart from reports from some residents at the northern end of sea deck, they've heard some kind of strange whispering sound coming from their apartment comms unit. 
I'm sure it's nothing, but I dispatched a member of tech to investigate. We have an emergency situation on board. Some kind of epidemic, it's driving people insane. I've managed to source it to a digital signal that keeps broadcasting within the comms array. It started on C-Deck, but now the entire population of Deck C to F have been massacred. They just went crazy and started killing each other. I've isolated a signal, so it stopped for now. Just trying to identify the source. It should be easy enough to delete the beacon if I can find the right frequency. I want to know what the message says, but I'm... I'm just too scared to listen. I've done it. I've managed to decrypt the signal and identify the source. But it's even more confusing than I thought. The signal originates from an uninhabited planet we passed 15 light years ago. Who sent it and how it managed to infect the comms array, I have no idea. That's the good news. The bad news is... I heard the message. I was trying to run it through the translator and I forgot the speaker was on. It's the same message relayed again and again and again. It's more a whisper than anything else. It says, kill them all. Blood. Blood everywhere. It's spread on the walls. People have started writing words in it, but it's a script I can't identify. I'm alone now on the comms deck. Pearson was the last one with me, but I had to stab him in the throat to stop him. Stop him. I can't remember what I had to stop him doing, but he's dead now. I can hear people out there. Some of them are still walking around. Some of them are barely breathing. I have to find them. I have to silence them. Signals from an unknown source, 15 light years from that ship's location. This signal driving its listeners to utter madness and eventually death. A signal that when heard would change the chemistry of the human brain in a way that would turn them into murderous shells. Investigations into the source of this signal have so far been inconclusive. As people assume that the ship travelled in a straight line from Seoul, all searches in this direction have not been successful. It is possible that the Fetis could have took some kind of a detour or that the movement of the stars have been taken into consideration. But I believe no search will be successful as I think the source is no longer on that planet. Numerous times we hear snippets of some unknown hand interacting with key moments of human history, such as the Formidine Rift and Conflux. For further coverage, please follow the link here. One location I believe has been somewhat overlooked, a signal from a settlement that nobody could identify, and a strange light that seems to have taken the inhabitants. Communication Array Delta 69, located in the Col 285 sector. This settlement was found by part unknown, completely deserted, with its escape pods and ships still on the pad. No crew member of this facility has ever been found. The logs are as follows. 
Control, we got a problem down here at Hadby. I'm going to need someone from security down here on the double. We found a body, and before you ask, it's not one of us. All personnel are present and accounted for. You're going to think I'm crazy. There's no way this guy should be out here. It's not like a dead body can be classed as personal effects, but he's here alright. Just appeared out of nowhere. Wilkins is right. We're going to have to inform the authorities about this. But how do we do that? They think we're either crazy or worse that we kill this guy. It doesn't matter that there isn't a mark on him or that according to our medic there is no cause of death, no disease, no poison or radiation. We've looked up the ship and its disappearance. Some kind of anomaly causing the ship to just vanish without a trace. These things are just stories that the deep space explorers tell to make their job seem more interesting than just scanning stars and planets. Nothing like that actually exists or we would know about it. I need to report this. It started this morning. Everything seemed normal, but there was an uneasiness among the team. No one could put a finger on it, just a general feeling that something was wrong. And then the signal started. I was about 10 kilometers from the station and appeared to be some kind of radio transmission with a digital data packet encoded to it. We spent hours trying to figure out how to decipher it, but I have to say at the moment, we don't have a clue what we're dealing with here. Along with the signal, something has appeared on the planet's surface that according to our survey simply cannot be there. There's a gravitational pull of some massive object, but there's nothing we can detect physically there. The gravitational field measured approximately 0.1 g, but we can't see what's creating it. Whatever it is, it's the source of the signal. We set the skimmer out with some equipment as a probe. I'm not going to risk anyone going out there until we know what we're dealing with. Do not come here. I repeat, do not come here. He opened his eyes. There was something there. The signal started, coming from him, like it was inside. I've ordered everyone out, locked off the infirmary until I can figure out what's going on. The signal is building stronger. People started feeling it, like it was in our heads. This anomaly, closer now, can't explain, seems to be, think it's going to. Recovery team 963 sit rep. Team 963 reporting in. I don't know what to tell you, sir. There's no one here, no bodies, no sign of any problem. All the automated systems are A OK. Just none is here. It's like they just vanished. Yes, I know how that sounds. All the security logs on the door say nobody left. The ships and escape pods are still in place. They left their belongings food, water, clothing. Yes, sir. Yes, I understand. Securing the station logs now, sir. Team 963, out. Lights and nearby signals that alter the human mind and body. This to me discounts Hex Edit, a drug used by Sirius to murder the crew of the Zarara. Although I do not have proof, I am pretty sure that these occurrences are not connected to the Fargoids. One reason being is that when encountered, the Fargoids have never displayed behaviour in this way. We look back at the toast of the Dark Wheel, we hear of the sirens of the Deepest Void. Currently, the farthest known accessible location is Beagle Point, and I would not describe a star system with moons, gas drains and stellar debris as a void. Which space is also discounted for me? As when we jump, there is things in which space, even if it is merely the photons we see via the lights. Many times we hear strange lights following ships out in the void, sometimes even crew going missing after encountering such events. What is also of interest from Delta 69 is the significance of the gravity of the object, enough to be the size of a large asteroid, yet small in appearance. The crew seems to have measured a gravitational pull of 0.1 g, could this have been a gate via wormhole travel? And if so, what is it that opened the gate and interacted with the inhabitants of Delta 69? Was this event connected with the Fetis in a way that the game's writers were attempting to connect a string of events or a breadcrumb trail for us to follow? Could there be another race out there? 
in the deepest void, dragging our sailors to their deaths. As we know, David Braben is a big fan of science fiction, with his favourite TV and movies being listed as 2001 A Space Odyssey and Battlestar Galactica 1980. Was another favourite of his The Andromeda Strain. Thetis was a god of the sea and the leader of the 50 Nereids. Like many other sea gods, she possessed the gift of prophecy and the power to change her shape at will. Because of a prophecy that she was destined to bear a son greater than his father, Zeus had her marry a mortal man, Cleus. The chosen groom was instructed to ambush her on the beach and not release his grasp of the struggling goddess as she metamorphosed into a host of shapes. The couple were afterwards married in a ceremony attended by all the gods of heaven. She bore a son, the celebrated hero Achilles. In her desperate attempt to protect her son during the Trojan War, Thetis called in many favours from the gods. These included Hephaestus and Dionysus, both of whom she had given refuge in the sea as they faced crises of youth, and Zeus, whose throne he had protected by summoning the giant Aegean when the gods had sought to bind him. Thetis' name is connected with the Greek ancient word Thesis, meaning creation and tethe meaning nurse thank you for watching please feel free to discuss below so far the discussions i've had with you guys has been great and i thank those who have took the time to engage me on these subjects and i thank you even more for watching and subscribing this genuinely means a lot to me from something that is born from a spare time hobby your engagement with me has been great thank you if you would like me to cover any further subject please let me know below and I will look into it. For those who are new, welcome and thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing below and even if you want, to like as well. It all helps this channel grow. Cheers.